once again with your first alert weather forecast. And we're going to be talking about, yes, the severe weather expected to take place across the nation's midsection for your Friday and Saturday and into your Sunday. We're going to see lots of severe weather out there from the Northern Plains and the Great Lakes all the way down to the Gulf Coast. So I-35 from Minnesota down to Dallas, San Antonio is going to be seeing that severe weather. So let's jump into our first map and talk about what's going on out there. Here's what we're seeing for your Thursday night right now. As I'm recording this video, it's about 7 p.m. on Thursday. And here's where our storm is. It's currently over Colorado. It's getting itself together because it came on shore at the Pacific Northwest. We've lost a lot of this moisture on the western side of the mountain. So we saw a lot of that moisture dissipate. And it, it did scatter some snow showers and some thunderstorms here in the northern Rockies and the Intermountain West. We did see that some weather out that way. But now it's moving out to the plains. And what it's doing is pulling up that Gulf of Mexico moisture. You see these isobars here that indicates that moisture flow all the way into Canada as this powerful storm is pulling in all of this Gulf moisture, but it's also pulling in dry air off of Mexico. So that dry air off of Mexico is also getting pulled into this storm. And what is that it's doing? It's creating, it is creating, here, let me get where I can get a good point here. My wife complains about me pointing like this. So it's gonna create this guy right here. This is called a dry line. And what a dry line is, is that boundary between that moist air coming off the Gulf of Mexico and the dry air coming off the land, particularly Mexico, coming off of old Mexico. We, and it's also coming here off of the desert Southwest. It's getting pulled into that counter, into that, that rotation around the storm system so as it's doing that it's getting pulled to the north it's also pulling that warmer air into the northern plains and the great lakes and we've been seeing we're going to be seeing those temperatures rise into the 70s and 80s as far north as minnesota and south dakota we're going to be seeing that warm air advent all the way into the north so it's going to set the stage for this Here's what we're going to be seeing on Saturday. This is what Saturday's projected forecast map looks like. Now, I'm going to break this down for you. We have our dry line down here in Texas, right, and New Mexico. It's going to be that dry air here, right, that moisture here, that moist air, that warm moist air here on this side, on the east side of the front, moving around that area of low pressure. We have a warm front that's going to be across the uh, the northeast here, the mid-Atlantic states. It's going to extend across the Great Lakes into the northern plains and into Minnesota. There's our area of low pressure right here over South Dakota. Our center is a 988 millibar low, so we have a, a pretty decent area of low pressure with a very strong cold front here. We're seeing our cold front extending down through the central and southern plains this is going to be moving to the east there and as it moves to the east it's going to bring all that moisture and that sets the stage for those severe thunderstorms so we're going to see a lot of severe thunderstorms as the dynamics will be in place to create a lot of those storms we're going to see a lot of tornadoes it's going to be a situation where we're going to see a lot of hail because of this cold front here it creates a support for those big thunderstorms so it's going to allow those thunderstorms to lose the front as sort of as like a wall it's going to be more like a support i'm going to hold you guys up so you can grow big and tall you can see those thunderstorms reach high into the stratosphere they're going to have 50,000 foot cloud tops says it's going to break through whatever cap is in the active atmosphere because of the strength and the energy we have a nice strong low level jet that's going to be power pushing through helping to break that cap and those storms are going to have a lot of energy a lot of moisture to work with so we're going to see those tornadoes out there large hell i'm, I'm expecting golf ball size hell in some locations 
as well as damaging winds. We'll see multiple MCSs develop, multi-cell convective systems. So you're going to see those, uh, those QLCSs. We're going to see a lot of severe thunderstorms taking place, a lot of straight line wind damage. We're talking about those winds in excess of 60 miles per hour. Might even be a deratio form too, especially down here through Oklahoma and Texas. You folks might see a deratio for your area. Here we are, we're gonna talk about the severe weather threat for your Friday. Here is gonna be, you have your marginal threat here through the Midwest and Iowa, you got Missouri, Iowa, as well as into Kansas, Nebraska, as well as Northern Oklahoma, and all across West Texas. Now this is just your general thunderstorms, but some of those isolated could become severe. We'll see some dry thunderstorms here across the Northern Plains into the Dakotas, maybe part of Montana and Wyoming. And then some more thunderstorms here in the Pacific Northwest. These will be non-severe, mostly rainfall with some embedded thunderstorms in there. It won't be anything too, too damaging or anything like that. It'll be some pretty lightning in the sky probably if you're in the Pacific Northwest there. But here's where our trouble is. And here across Kansas and Oklahoma is where our tornado threat will be. We're going to see a lot of large hail in this region here. So that's going to be your severe threat for your Friday. Now here we are as we move. Here is the what we're going to see. Here's your tornado outlook for Friday. So you're, like I said before on the last map right here is where, you're, where you have your 5% chance of a tornado. And here is our 2% or less chance for a tornado. And this is meaning that over a 25 mile distance, if you look at it as far as distance, in that 25 mile distance or radius or area, there's a 5% chance that a tornado would appear in that area of 25 miles. When you see that, that's that, what that means right there. So we got a 5% and a 2% chance. And here is what we're seeing as far as hail is concerned. Our hail threat will be extreme for this area. This is the extreme hail threat. So we're definitely gonna see those big hailers, those golf balls, especially if you're gonna have tornadoes because tornadoes and hail kind of go hand in hand. They are bosom buddies. You don't see one without the other typically. And we're gonna see that hail threat also is here. There's a little bit less of a chance, but here, here's about maybe a 15% chance. But here we have a, a greater than 60% chance of seeing large hail with those tornadoes. And here we are for your damaging wind threat. Again, this area here across Southern Kansas, Northern Oklahoma, if you're going to be seeing those severe thunderstorms with that, if you get any MCSs developed or some linear severe thunderstorms, you're going to be seeing those damaging winds. And often what happens with the damaging wind storms is that those storms usually involve a single cell uh, supercell thunderstorms and eventually they kind of organize into a linear pattern so you they become multi-cell or linear or quasi-linear meaning it's linear but it's kind of broken and you will see those severe thunderstorms and you will get those linear thunderstorms then you'll see those damaging winds occur all right so let's keep it moving here this is what we're going to see for saturday here's when the disaster strikes Saturday is going to be a rowdy day. We're going to see that that chance for a marginal risk of severe weather all the way up into Minnesota and Wisconsin there. We're going to see those severe thunderstorms take place more so in the evening here and overnight hours from the northern plains. But we will see that twin that slight risk over here into southwestern Minnesota, back into uh, South Dakota, Nebraska, all the way down into Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas. Even parts of New Mexico may see those severe thunderstorms and slight risk. Here is our enhanced risk here for the central and southern plains. We got North Texas, the Oklahoma Panhandle. We're looking at Kansas here, southern Nebraska. You guys have the greatest threat of seeing that severe weather and the worst aspects of that severe weather in your region for Saturday. Now, here we are with the tornado outlook for Saturday. This is your Saturday. Here again, here is your your 5% or better chance of seeing tornadoes in this region here and in this region here in South Dakota. Now, one thing I have to say about South Dakota tornadoes, 
South Dakota tornadoes tend to erupt from elevated thunderstorms, so you tend to see those stovepipe tornadoes or maybe um, your rope tornadoes a lot in the northern plains. So that could be pretty exciting for the storm chasers out there. But we also have that 2% chance of seeing a, a tornado anywhere in this shaded area here in South Dakota, Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas. You guys can see that chance for a tornado in that region anywhere on Saturday. Here we are as far as your hail threat is concerned for Saturday. So that's pretty much everybody in this severe outlook area. We have that that 5% um, chance here into the northern plains, into Minnesota, northern uh, North Dakota here. But you do have that 15% chance here across southwestern Minnesota, northwestern Iowa, central uh, South Dakota. We have New Mexico, we have uh, Nebraska, we also have Kansas, Oklahoma, central Oklahoma, western Oklahoma, into the Panhandle, west and north Texas. But you have that 30% chance of seeing a a uh, hailstorm right here across central uh, North Texas, the Oklahoma Panhandle, and southwestern Kansas there. So that's your hail threat for Saturday. So Saturday is going to be a pretty busy day. Same thing exists for the wind threat as far as the northern plains and the high plains, the central uh, plains, and the southern plains through Texas and Oklahoma there. You guys have as much as a 30% chance of seeing those damaging winds. So this is the area I expect to see some MCSs develop or maybe straight line thunderstorms. You may have some linear thunderstorms through this area. And I expect to see single cell thunderstorms or multi-cell clusters through the northern section here because you have the area of low pressure that's gonna be up here and that shearing that's taking place from that rotation of those thunderstorms is gonna kind of prevent those storms from taking a linear pattern because there's so much swirling going around in that area. You have a lot of wind shear in the northern section of this storm, but down here along that cold front, I certainly expect to see those linear thunderstorms take place and our tornado threat is gonna be greatest down here in northern Texas and uh, Oklahoma. So that is a look as far as that's concerned. Now we're gonna look at Sunday. Here is Sunday. Now Sunday, that severe threat moves even a little bit further to the west as our storm is moving very slowly to the east. It doesn't have a lot of energy behind it to push it forward, but it is gonna slide off into Canada there and begin to weaken as it moves into Canada. So it's gonna lose some of this energy as it moves into Canada. But we will continue to see that a slight risk of severe weather here through the northern plains, the upper Mississippi Valley, the central Mississippi Valley, down into the lower Mississippi Valley here, and the Ozarks, we're gonna to start to see that risk for severe weather take place for those regions as this main storm starts to move off to the east. Here is a look at our, our um, Cape for your Friday. This is Friday's Cape, and we see how it comes up into Oklahoma and Kansas there. This is a, going to be about 2,500 to 3,500 joule kilograms of Cape energy there. So that's a lot of energy for severe thunderstorms to work with. Here we're going to be, what we're going to see for Saturday, that Cape moves into the central plains and northern plains now. We're starting to see that move into Minnesota, and it's eventually going to move into Minnesota and Wisconsin. And we're going to start to see some of that Cape into the northern plains and the Great Lakes. So it's going to spread that risk for those severe thunderstorms here through this region all the way through here as that cape is getting pulled all the way almost to the Canadian border. Here we are, your thunderstorm setup. So when it comes to lift, we got extreme lift out there because we have that powerful cold front. That cold front is going to act like a and, and really force that. It's going to create a lot of forcing and force that air to rise because that's what that cold front does. That cold front is colder, heavier air. So that warm, moist air is going to lift as it runs into that cold front. So that's what we mean when we say forcing. So it's going to have a lot of forcing. So it's going to have a lot of lift, high instability. So we're going to see those tornadoes and we're going to see that large hail. And shear is moderate, but it might be a little bit heavy 
around that low pressure center, but that low pressure center is going to kind of lose some of its oomph as it moves into Canada. So we're going to leave the shear at a moderate. Our tornadoes is going to be moderate risk for tornadoes, high risk for hail. The hail, I think, is going to be one of the bigger aspects of this storm that we're going to see. And a lot of wind, we're going to see a moderate risk for those damaging winds out there with those linear thunderstorms. And the overall threat for this storm is going to be marginal at best because I think those tornadoes will be isolated. But that hail, I think, may be kind of widespread. See a lot of instances of hail with this storm system. All right, so here's our overall severe threat for the central and northern plains. We're going to call it a 6 out of 12. I'm going to give it a 6 out of 12. It's going to be elevated. But it's going to be because of that very strong cold front that's going to be associated with the storm. We got a warm front that's going to be to the north, a cold front coming from the west, low pressure center creates a nice triple point for us for those thunderstorms. So we'll see that severe weather here across that triple point, and then we'll see those linear thunderstorms down along the cold frontal area there. So that is well, we're going to give it a 6 out of 12. I would hate to see a 12. I mean, we get a 12 there. That's not good. My name is Julie Godot. Thanks for watching this video as we kind of forecast and analyze the severe weather coming up for the next couple of days. Uh, I'll be making a severe weather video coming up just after this one. So please stay tuned for that one. You guys have a great day. I will see you in the next video. Oh, before we go, please leave your likes, your comments, and subscribe to the channel and I would appreciate